In this video, we are going to be learning some basic geometry definitions and how to name them using symbols. So our first example is a point. A point in Euclidean geometry is undefined. You can think of a point as a location, and a point has no size. So how would you name this point? You would name it by saying point P. Pretty simple. All right, next we have a line. And including geometry, a line is also undefined. You can think of a line as a straight path that extends in two opposite directions without end and has no thickness. A line contains infinitely many points. So here I have an example of a line. So how would you name this line? You're going to pick two points on the line. So here I pick point A and B. And so you can put them in any order. So I chose to do A, B, and then you actually draw a line with arrows above it. I could have also written it. At, named it as line BA and remember you draw a line with arrows above it. Next we have a line segment. A line segment is a part of a line that is bounded by two distinct endpoints and contains every point on the line between its endpoints. So how would you name this line segment? So I, the endpoints of this line segment are A and B so you have to name it by their endpoints, by its endpoints and so you would name it by A, B, and then you would actually draw a line above it without any arrows to represent a line segment. I could have also said uh, line segment B, A without any arrows above it. Next we have a ray. A ray is the part of a line that consists of one endpoint, so we have one endpoint on a ray, and all the points of the line on one side of the endpoint, so the other side of the, of the ray goes on forever. So how would you name this ray? You have to start with the endpoint, that's critical. So and when you're naming a ray, you cannot say ray B A here. You have to name it by first its endpoint and then another point on the line. So to name this ray, it would be ray A B. And then you would just draw a ray above it. Next we have an angle. An angle is formed by two rays with the same endpoint. The rays are the sides of the angle and the common endpoint is the vertex of the angle. So how would you name this angle? You can actually name it by three ways. You can name it by saying angle A. The angle symbol is kind of like the less than symbol. You could also name it by saying angle B, A, C. Notice that the vertex is in the middle when you are naming an angle. That is critical. And then you could also say angle C, A, B. And those are the only ways that you could name this angle. Next, we have parallel lines. Two lines are parallel if they lie in the same plane and do not intersect. Parallel lines have the same slope. We'll be working with that later. So how would you use symbols to represent that these two lines are parallel? Well, first you recognize that these are lines. They have arrows. So we're going to be using that notation again to name our lines. And then the symbol for parallel is just kind of like an 11, okay? Vertical lines, two vertical lines straight up and down. So you would name this you would represent this by AB with a line with arrows above it is parallel, that's a symbol for parallel, to line DC with arrows above it. And also you could say you could have said line BA instead of AB and you could have also said line CD instead of DC. Next we have perpendicular lines. They are lines that intersect and form right angles. Perpendicular lines have negative or opposite reciprocal slopes. We'll be looking more into that later. So in this example, I am showing you two lines that are intersecting and forming right angles. They're actually form four right angles, even though only one of them is shown with this symbol right here. That's how you show right angles on a diagram. So how would you use symbols to represent that these two lines are perpendicular? So these are lines, so they will have arrows when you are naming them. And the sign for perpendicular is an upside down T. So an example of how you would write this would be line AC. I could have also said CA, and then the upside down T is perpendicular to line BD. And notice that I have lines with arrows above them. All right, next we have a triangle. A triangle is a polygon with three sides. You can choose any side to be a base. The height is perpendicular to the base that is chosen. 
So in this example, I have a triangle represented. And so how would you name this triangle? You would name it by triangle ABC. I could have also done it triangle BAC and this and uh, various other ways. It honestly doesn't matter when you're naming a triangle as long as you use uh, the three the three endpoints. All right, a plane. And including geometry, a plane is undefined. You can think of a plane as a flat surface that extends without end and has no thickness. A plane contains infinitely many lines. So how would you name this plane? So you would pick three lines that are, um, excuse me, three points that do not make up a line to name this plane. So an example would be pl plane BDC. Okay, and last we have a circle. A circle is a set of all points in a plane that are a given distance. The radius r, I labeled it in the circle below in the example, from a given point, the center. The center of the circle would be m. So how would you name this circle? It's pretty simple. You just name it by its center point. So the name of the circle would be circle m.